Okay, so in this video, we will introduce the notion of sequences. A sequence is simply an infinite list of real numbers. And here's the usual notation. So we go with curly brackets, we write A subscript N, and N begins at 1. The first term of our sequence, A1, and N ranges over all positive integers. So N will be equal to 1, then 2, then 3, then 4, all the way up to infinity. As again, a sequence is an infinite list of real numbers, and we can write other terms explicitly. The first term is A1, comma, the next term when N is 2 gives us A2, and so forth. Then we have A3, then A4, dot, dot, dot. So it's an an infinite list of real numbers. A1 is a real number, A2 is a real number, A3 is a real number, so is A4, and so forth. And there are two ways you can visualize a sequence. When you view the sequence simply as an infinite list of real numbers, you can visualize a sequence along the real axis. So you can imagine along the real axis that you would position your sequence. And just for argument's sake, suppose that the terms of your sequence are positive and they're increasing, so they're getting bigger. So A1 could be here, then A2 could be a little bigger. Oops. Suppose A2 is here. <laughs> A2 is a little bigger than A1, A3 stays a little bigger than A2, to say A4 is much bigger than A3, and so forth. So you can easily visualize your sequence when you place every term of your sequence along the real line. You can also think of a sequence in a slightly different way. If you think here, we have an assignment of a real number for every positive integer. Two the positive integer 1, we assign the real number A1. To the positive integer 2, we assign the real number A2. To the positive real number, the positive integer 3, we assign the real number A3. And to the positive integer 4, we assign A4, and so forth. So you can think of a sequence as a function from the positive integers to the real numbers, because to each positive integer, we assign a real number. So this is a second way of thinking of a sequence, which is equally valid. So we can think of a function from the positive integers to the real numbers. And again, the function takes some positive integer n and returns fn. And this is exactly the nth term of the sequence. And now, instead of visualizing the sequence as a list of real numbers along the x-axis, we can visualize the sequence as the graph of our function, defined only on positive integers. Again, our domain consists of the positive integers, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on. And you say, okay, well, at 1 we have the value f1 along the y-axis, and f of 1, the y-value of our function, is exactly a1, the first term of our sequence. And you can look at the y value of our function at 2, f2. Again, assuming the function is getting bigger, and f2 is a2, the second term of our sequence. You could look at the y value of your function at 3, f3. So you're getting a little bigger, and so forth. So you can visualize the sequence either 
in the Cartesian plane as the graph of this discrete function defined only on the positive integers where the y values above each integer is the corresponding term of the sequence or again you can simply view it as an infinite list of real numbers along the real axis. Let's look now at actual examples that are explicit for sequences. So we could consider, say, the sequence n over 2n plus 3 as n goes from 1 to infinity. So let's just write the first few terms of this sequence. The sequence begins when n equals 1, and we have the term 1 over 2 plus 3, so 1 over 5. The second term when n is 2. 2 over 4 plus 3, so 2 over 7. The third term when n is 3, so 3 over 6 plus 3, 9. The fourth term when n equals 4, 4 over 8 plus 3, 11. And let's go with one more term when n equals 5, 5 over 10 plus 3, 5 over 13. And this sequence, this list of real numbers, is infinite. Let's look at one other example, b. We could look at, say, negative 1 to the n over 2 to the n, and again ranging from 1 to infinity. And we can list again the first few terms of our sequence, our infinite list of real numbers. When n equals 1, we get negative 1 to the 1, which is negative 1, over 2 to the 1, which is 2, so negative 1 half. When n is 2, negative 1 squared is positive 1, over 2 squared is 4, so 1 quarter. When n is 3, negative 1 cubed is negative 1, over 2 cubed, which is 8. When n is 4, we get positive 1 here. 2 to the 4 is 16. And let's write one last term. When n is 5, negative 1 to the 5 is negative 1. 2 to the 5 is 32. So negative 1 over 32, and so forth. We could look at this sequence, simply negative 1 to the n. And this is a very simple sequence, right? When you take an even power of negative 1, you get positive 1. When you take an odd power of negative 1, you get negative 1. We begin with an odd power, so the sequence will be negative 1 plus 1, negative 1 plus 1, negative 1, and so forth. So this sequence will oscillate forever between negative 1 and 1. Let's look at one last example. the sequence root of n over the ln of n. And here, I will not begin when n equals 1, but when n equals 2. If you think about it, if you plug in 1 in the expression, you'll get root of 1 over ln of 1, but the ln of 1 is 0. So this term does not exist when n equals 1. And you can begin your sequence at any point that you want. You could begin when n is 5, when n is 30. It's completely up to you. So we'll begin here when n equals 2, all the way up to infinity. So the first term will be when n is 2, root of 2, over the ln of 2. When n is 3, root of 3, over ln of 3. Then root of 4, over ln of 4, and so forth. So another infinite list of real numbers. And that's really all that sequences are. They are infinite lists of real numbers, and always remember that you have two ways to look at a sequence geometrically. If you go back to our introduction, 
you can always list the terms of your sequence along the real axis, thinking of the sequence as simply an infinite list of real numbers, or if you think of the sequence as a function from the positive integers to the real numbers, then you can graph this discrete function where above each integer the y value is the corresponding term of your sequence. And that's it.